Mm. Oh, all hail iced coffee. Hello everyone and welcome back to Outside the Box. Today it's just one solitary box to open up, but if memory serves, there are four figures, maybe a sticker, and I can't wait to see the sticker. Let's crack it open. You know, as of this recording, I did just see yesterday the new Super Mario movie and no spoilers, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Thoroughly enjoyed it. At a brisk 90 minutes, it doesn't overstay its welcome. Um, Obviously not perfect, but it does pretty much what it needs to do for a first animated Mario movie. 4.5 out of 5 stars. Can't wait for the sequel. Okay, okay. Oh, wow. Very, very neatly packed. Kudos, kudos. Obviously, four legacy figures that I've had on pre-order for ages. And I do rather like how they're packed in a way so that I can't really tell who's who. <laughs> so... Without really peeking, I'm just gonna pick one out. I wanna take a look at it. Let me set this down. Okay, actually one of them is different from the other, so let me pick that one first. Here we have, oh, Legacy Evolution Scrapbook. Yeah, I was looking forward to this figure for what seems like forever. I know everybody else already has theirs. I'm glad to have mine finally. And of course it shows a whole gimmick in the back how it can just fall apart into a million pieces but it's not necessary for the transformation, which is one thing that I'm excited about. Let's crack this guy open. Wait, wait, wait. Don't cut myself here. Ah, okay. Oh, another baggie, of course. I will, of course, try to transform this guy without having to tear him apart. Hopefully it's not too tricky. Okay, that should just come out just like that, I guess. All right, we're not off to a great start, but that's okay. It's intentional, it's intentional. Uh, let's grab this guy. Okay. All right. Whoa, whoa. Quite a few people. Whoa, okay. All right. Let's put them down here. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pieces in the little baggie. I'm surprised just one wheel, but I'm guessing it's the spare. Now, the first thing that is striking about him, even though I've seen plenty of pictures, is um, just how <laughs> not the same size as a Redgar he is. But we all knew that, right? But yeah, he's definitely smaller than that guy. It's a little bit jarring considering that he's not a motorcycle, so the alt modes are not gonna be matching up whatsoever, but he still looks fantastic. Oh, I love all the little detailing too. This is definitely gonna be a figure that I'm gonna look forward to doing the eventual customization slash repaint and give him a nice, dirtied, rustied finish. Oh, that's gonna look so good. That is a very nice head sculpt too. You know what I'm thinking that'll work for? For some kind of like a post-apocalyptic Ironhide, he does have that signature mohawk. I could see that working for Ironhide, 100%. And with that eye patch, just badass. Just badass. Okay, the arms do seem to separate rather easily, so I'm not terribly happy about that. Thankfully though, the other leg seems pretty tight. Okay, not bad. Not too bad. Now, as far as the accessories go, I'm guessing there's no real wrong place to put them in. So we have his extra wheel. We'll just add that onto the arm right there. That looks, that looks sufficiently badass. So it looks like these little guys are the hand weapons. I mean, I guess that kind of works. Yeah, I'm not too shabby. Now he also does come with a hook accessory, but it looks like the hands being on mushroom pegs, you can't really easily take them off. So I don't think you can just give him a hook hand. Okay, that comes off. Now, of course, if you try hard enough, you can remove the hands, but unfortunately it's not a five millimeter compatible post. So that idea is unfortunately out. That's a bummer, although I'm sure it can be customized for that. Okay, but the other accessories I think are mostly for alt mode. So let's get them transformed. Oh boy, come on, come on. I know you can do it. Oh, wow, okay. I like that. All right, and here we have Scrap Hook. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Ah, there we go. In his vehicle mode. That is a damn good look. I really do love that. It's also kind of awesome how the weapons snap onto the hood of the vehicle and kind of completes the hood, not just the engine itself. 
That's nice. The spare wheel fits very nicely in the back, not being blocked by the hook. Awesome. <laughs> These crazy ass exhausts here on the sides. That's a very, that's a very Mad Max look. I am digging that. I definitely have to say that for this figure, I enjoyed the transformation a lot more than I did with Battle Trap. Although they're similar, I know they're trying to accomplish two different things. So, you know, I won't hold that against Battle Trap, but this, I absolutely did enjoy it a ton. So adding it to the backlog, happy to do so. Um, you know, the more excited I get about these figures, the more I kind of want to customize them already. So I don't know, maybe sometime soon. On to the next one, but first coffee. Okay, all right. Uh, here we have Transformers Legacy Evolution Shrapnel. Looking very shrapnel-y. Nice. And I am so glad that he is part of the Evo Fusion gimmick. He would have been ruined without it. Very nice. Ooh. Ah, wait, why are there two instructions in here? Hang on. Wow, we scored a double booklet. Yes. <laughs> Woo, I'm coming up a winner today, baby. Okay. <laughs> if anybody wants one, hit me up. Nice, nice. And yet another baggie. I mean, we just saw them. Evo Fusion, right? Evo Fusion. Okay. Oh, okay. That looks um, that looks a lot like the front end of Soundwaves' weapon. I don't remember if G1 Shrapnel had this design for his weapon. I'd have to go back and check. But I like the look of it. Looks cool. I do wish the silver paint would have been continued all the way to the very tip, but I'm sure that's for blast effects. You don't want to scratch off this paint, right? Okay, thanks, Hasbro. Appreciate it. And also two purple, very generic looking blasters here. Plenty of hollow sections to fill in too, so that's gonna be fun. But Shrapnel himself looks a fantastic, very, very sturdy feeling figure too. Oh man, these joints are not kidding around, okay. Definitely not too tight though, they feel fantastic. I know he is just begging for some chrome paint on those antenna. <laughs> Can't wait to get that done. And I do have to say that I love, love, love that silver and red on the legs too. That is a damn good look. And that clear yellow plastic piece in the middle is a very nice touch, but I do hope for the love of God that it can be separated, <laughs> please. <laughs> we'll find out eventually. All right, let's get this guy transformed. Yeah, looks surprisingly simple. Not surprisingly, expectedly simple. Ow, ow. Oh, okay. All right. Tighter than I thought it was. Okay. Yeah, this is just perfect. Shrapnel never had a complicated transformation to begin with. Super simple. You can more than likely figure it out without any kind of an instruction, but there's no reason to really overcomplicate it for the new figure too. So I do love this. You know, growing up, I didn't have a lot of Transformers back in the G1 days. In fact, the ones that I remember having the earliest anyways, one of the uh, monster bots, the Autobots that was like a two-headed dragon. And I remember it had like a sparking effect feature. And I remember having this two pack of Decepticon cassettes. One was an ape, one was a hawk, and they combined into a, uh, a regular robot and you can make the hawk head of PP. I'm not, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> and I remember having this guy back in G1 and I loved him. I mean, it's not like I had a lot of choice, so it means a lot to have them now. <laughs> okay, and the weapons in bot mode don't really add much of anything to the look that I really care about. I do like how the purple guns in the bottom kind of simulate, I guess, additional legs down there. I don't know, they're not too bad, but this one is just kind of, you know, just on top. It's a look, not too bad though. On to the next guy. Oh, here we have Transformers Legacy Evolution Crash Bar. The other uh, uh, Red Gar figure of Junkion. There you go. Yes, yes. Man, two Junkions in one package. How awesome is that, huh? Here we go. How many booklets do I have now? Oh, just one. Okay, all right. Can't get mad. Can't get mad. Okay. Yes. He looks great. He looks great. Let's uh, untie him. Oh, oh. <laughs> I can't stop doing this. Okay. All right. Let's put him back together. There we go. Okay. All right. Yeah, once again, it's a little bit jarring, a little bit surprising just how small he is because I'm used to actual Retgar, but still, he looks very nice. Very nice indeed. Now, this guy being an actual motorcycle, I think it it's more fitting for him to be the size that he is. It's still going to look jarring, his alt mode next to Retgar, but still. <laughs> 
not too bad. Now the wheels hanging out in the back, just like that, do seem like they're gonna be a bit intrusive to the articulation, but they do kind of move out of the way, which is really cool. I rather, I rather appreciate that, thank you very much. Now he also comes with a bag full of accessories. Let's see what he's got. Not as many as scrap hook. Uh, we have four accessories here. Wow, I have no idea what this is. Okay, all right. I can see that these are kind of like exhausts for the old mode. They do look exhausty. Um, I don't know if I would leave them this color though on the eventual repaint. And I'm guessing these are gonna be some weapon types. I don't know what they're gonna do in old mode. Very blocky. So the exhaust just kind of hook up in the back, just like that. Yeah, that's, that's not a bad look at all. That adds to the uh, overall look of the figure. I do like that. Very good. Very, 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 very good. And then these guys are just weapons, I guess. Yeah, okay. Almost like missile pods in a way. Okay, yeah, he's packing some heat here. Uh, I think it would be a little bit better if it looked like they actually had missiles within them. They rather look kind of empty right now. Uh, but still, <laughs> not too shabby. All right, on to vehicle mode. I'm already not happy with step one. <laughs> I'm already not happy. Uh, now at first glance, it doesn't look like there's any room. Hang on. Now at first glance, it doesn't look like there's any room in the back to actually tilt the head back, but you're actually tilting it from the base and it's folding the whole thing back. That didn't want to go as smooth the first time around, but now that I've done it one time, it's very easy after that. Okay, all right, let's get things lined up here. Okay, and so here we have it in the motorcycle mode, which that was a hell of a finicky transformation. Not horrible. You can still probably have an easier time by separating everything and then putting it back together, but there's some parts, especially here in the front, that you have to make sure two other sections are in place before you peg other sections, and it was a little bit tricky. Not too bad, though. I'm still not 100% sure if it's still correct. I might have to move some things around because the rolling seems very delicate, though, but a lot of the time, that's how they are. These exhausts that just peg into the sides do have these extra pegs pointing down, which I think they kind of are supposed to act as kickstands, but if you're not careful, they can interfere with the rolling of it too. But other than that though, looks like a really great design. Because it is post-apocalyptic in nature, you can forgive a lot of the uh, things that might not look all that perfect on the motorcycle, but it's not bad. I do like it. Now, there is one seemingly extra mechanic on the rear wheel that I didn't see in the instruction booklet. So let me put it back into bot mode and see what we can do with that. Okay, so I do wanna show this on camera. There's definitely some extra hinges on this, uh, what ends up being the rear wheel to go ahead and remove it. That opens up there. Okay, disregard that. This also opens up and you can just pop the wheel out. This back wheel has a very interesting mechanic where the sections inside you can expand them to have them pop out these shuriken-like features. And that's not anywhere in the booklet for some weird reason. Now, I'm trying to see if this can be connected onto the exhaust weapon to make some kind of an ax weapon. I don't know, but the pegs that are on there are about the same size as the pegs on the uh, accessory itself. One of the pegs does have a hollow bit where the screw is but none of the pegs on here seem to fit. So let's try the other one. And I don't know what kind of a weapon they would intend for this to be. Doesn't seem like it would make any sense, although few things do, right? Nothing fits as well. And it doesn't seem to fit anywhere onto the figure itself too. Now, I don't think I've seen any other reviewers talk about this feature, although I haven't seen them all. I'm not a bastion for knowledge on this kind of thing. If anything, you can kind of have them hold it if you place one of the spikes into his fist. And it's not secure by any means, but that's the only thing that looks kind of reasonable to me. Very interesting feature. I like that. I like that. Okay, I'm just taking another look at the back of the box and it definitely does show you that feature for the wheel. So they do mention it, although again, it's still weird how it's not in the instruction itself though. And I see how it's supposed to connect to the hand. I feel like an idiot now. Okay, let's do that. Okay, so this is supposed to be 
the intended look for the weapon, which it isn't bad, but that just seems like an accident waiting to happen. I think it makes a lot more sense having it on his forearm, almost like as a shield type of a weapon. And yeah, that does look <laughs> pretty badass. I could have easily missed that, so I'm glad I caught it. Although I'm sure I'm not the only one. And of course, these two guys look just fantastic together, even if they're not in any kind of a scale. <laughs> I do dig them a lot. Okay, one more to go. One quick sip. Oh, okay, I'm ready. Oh, yes. Transformers Legacy Evolution, Animated Universe, Prowl, finally coming at us here. Speaking of wheel gimmicks, right? <laughs> All right, let's crack this guy open. Ooh, yeah, up, oh, up, oh, up, oh, right into the trash. There we go. Oh, okay. All right. Weapons. Let's go ahead and get these on. Now, Legacy Transformers Animated Prowl looks fantastic, but unfortunately, it looks like my copy is missing a piece. You'll notice on his wings, he has his handlebars, but he's missing the bars on the other side. And I did go ahead and check inside the box to see if it's loose. It's not, I couldn't find it anywhere. And because it connects via a wide pin, I don't think that's something that is remotely detachable. So unfortunately, my copy's incomplete. Now I did grab this from Big Bad Toy Store, so I'm gonna reach back out to them, see if they can send me a replacement. I don't think it'll be a big issue, I hope not. Things happen, right? Things unfortunately happen. And of course, this guy was the one that I was looking forward to the most. <laughs> but putting that aside, I do think this figure looks absolutely fantastic. No, it does not have the same proportions as the original animated Prowl, but that's not what they were going for with this figure. The same term keeps popping up, g one right? That's what they were going for, giving him a more blocky G1 look, which I think it looks nice. I still do prefer the original animated look, which it took some getting used to, but now that we're used to it, uh, you know, that's what we prefer. <laughs> but still though, to make a figure based on animated Prowl to fit a little bit closer to G1, it's definitely an accomplishment that they achieve this to begin with. Now I know I'm probably going to have some issues with the alt mode just based on some pictures that I've been seeing, but let's take a look at it firsthand, shall we? You know what, just a quick note before we start with the transformation though, now that I'm seeing the wing, one wing without the handlebars, I actually do prefer it that way. I do wish they had an easier method of removing them. They just look a little bit cleaner. This obviously wasn't on the original figure. Um, it doesn't sit very well, right? it kind of hinders the overall look of it. So, I don't know, I guess it's a half blessing, I don't know. Let's transform him though. Shit. <laughs> it's okay, it's okay, we can reattach this, there we go. It's not working, there it is. Now that doesn't, God damn, damn it, okay, all right, all right. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay. Okay, so here he is in motorcycle mode, and yeah, that transformation was kind of a pain in the butt. There's some sections here in the back that just don't want to hold into place because there's a peg that's supposed to go in between the two arms, and as soon as you get it in there, it splits the arm, so it's kind of a tricky thing to get right. That, and depending on what angle everything is in back here, um, the kickstand is either not long enough or a little bit too long, so it needs a little bit of massaging to get it just right. Now, overall, this bike mode doesn't work nearly as well as our Junkie on Crash Bar, but I won't really hold that against Animator Prowl, only because it's supposed to be a Cybertronian look of a motorcycle, nothing really Earth specific. But still, keeping that in mind, what's supposed to be the motorcycle bits in the middle here, they don't work at all. The original Animator Prowl did a much better job of giving us a good alt mode, partly due because of those original proportions too. So this legacy version is at a disadvantage in recreating that. One extra detail that I do like though is on the front side of these sections for the motorcycle that become the bottom of the wings, we get these vents. Obviously Animated Prowl used these as a kind of a jetpack in the show. And the original figure didn't have that kind of a detail but we do have it here so I really do appreciate that. So overall, there's a lot of good things going for this figure but the alt mode isn't really one of them. It's not horrible but the execution, a little bit lackluster. Not to mention that my copy is a little bit incomplete. 
Still though, once I hopefully get a complete version of this, I do look forward to hopefully giving him a nice coat of paint in the future. That can only help. But overall, a bit of a bummer. Was looking forward to this guy, and overall the bot mode is nice. I wish the alt mode was a little bit better executed. Still though, not a terrible figure. So there you have one box, four figures, some greater than others, but all of them good in their own right. It may actually be a minute before I do another unboxing. I do have the new Yolo Park Shockwave model kit in my pile of loot at Big Bad Toy Store, but I'm waiting for some other things to come out so I can have them all shipped together. But I look forward to having them soon. And even better, maybe building one one day? I don't know, I do want to. <laughs> but if you have any of these figures yourself and you have some comments, feel free to leave them down below. And don't forget, you can follow me on all the social medias. Links are down there as well. And if you like what you saw, well, you know what to do. See you soon, everyone. Take care.